At the foot of the cross, where I kneel in adoration, and I lay my burdens down, I exchange all my sin for the promise of salvation, and your name across my brow. At the foot of the cross, I give up my vain ambition, and I leave my selfish pride. In the peace that is there, will you restore my vision? All the places I am blind. I will wait here at the cross. I will wait here at the cross. I will wait here at the cross. At the foot. morning and welcome to worship this morning from St Mary's Nantwich. Today is Palm Sunday when we celebrate the kingship of Jesus. We invite all those who are watching on YouTube or Facebook to feel the presence of Jesus in our midst as we journey towards Jerusalem. You may be using Facebook or YouTube and of course you're welcome to use the chat facility to greet each other and to praise the Lord in whatever way you wish. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you and, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray together. Triumphal Lord, the gates of Holy Week open before us. We see but do not fully understand the way you are treading. How can we understand the mystery of a king riding on a coat? We lift our eyes and hearts to, to greet, greet your, your coming, coming triumph. triumph. Triumphal Lord, people line the road to Jerusalem. Some hide for fear of being noticed. Others wave their palm branches in front of you. Some spread their cloaks on the ground to give you honour. We lift our eyes and hearts to greet your coming triumph. Triumphal Lord, those who hate your good news are planning your downfall. Behind the radiant sun and the shouts of Hosanna, dark clouds are gathering. Will they really follow your majestic call? or fall by the wayside. We lift our eyes and hearts to greet your coming triumph. Triumphal Lord, open our mouths that we may praise the glory of your presence. Let us praise you for your generous love and meeting with us today. May we lay down before you our lives in service to your holy name. We lift our eyes and hearts to, to greet, greet your, your coming, coming triumph. Amen. Dwells in humanity, feels in humility. 
Sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. We confess our selfishness and lack of love. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. We confess our fear and failures in sharing our faith. Christ, have mercy. We confess our stubbornness and lack of trust. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday. Uh, it's a day when we can think about the kingship of Jesus. And not only that, we can imagine perhaps where we are on the road to Jerusalem. Do we stand at the front of the crowd and see what's happening? Do we stand at the back and keep out of the way? These are the sort of questions that Palm Sunday raises for us and perhaps for you many other questions as well. So what we're just about to do is to enact a short drama uh, so that it gives us all the opportunity to think about where we would be on that dusty road to Jerusalem. Here we go. Hey guys, why are you out on the roadside? The king is coming. The king? Oh, I love a bit of pageantry. What's the occasion? You mean what's the occasion? The king is coming. Which king? The new king, I think. You think? When did we get a new king? We didn't get him, not yet, but everyone says a new king is coming like the prophets talked about. The prophets? When did you start studying the scripture scrolls? Look, the kings we have now are under the Roman, Roman rule, right? Herod would never fight against Caesar. So if we ever want to be a free country again, we need a new king, don't we? A king like David, someone perhaps who can lead us into battle. Lead you into battle? 
you get a nosebleed if anyone looks at you in a funny way. Well, uh, not me, um, but us, um, Israel. Uh, get us back into being a free country again. And this is our first chance to see him for ourselves, to see what he looks like. But who's minding the market stall? This is your busy time, isn't it? You could be making some money instead of standing here waiting until who knows when. It's still a king, our king. The stall can wait. We can live surely without one day's cash. And what if no one were here? What would the king think of us? We had to turn up. Uh, hang on, look, look. He's coming. They're, they're coming now. Excellent. Job done. He's here. You've seen him. Now let's go. I'm going to throw my cloak on the road to make a way for him. Hey, that's a good idea. I'll do me too. What? You want me to throw my new cloak on the road? My new cloak? Do you know how much this costs? I'm not throwing that amongst the dust and camel droppings. Thank you very much. I'm finding this amazing. I need to wave something. It needs to be bigger, so rugby shirt's fine. Look, someone over there has a palm branch. Go and grab a couple from that tree. Hang on. What happened to being eco-friendly? We're tearing that trees down now, are we? Hosanna! Praise God! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise, Praise God! The Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God! Look, this guy hasn't done anything yet. You don't do a victory parade until after the battle is won. You guys have lost the plot. It doesn't matter if he hasn't done anything yet. We have hope. God hasn't left us. We can either become part of it, join in and give everything we have to it, or sit on the sidelines watching and waiting to see what happens. I want to see what God's doing. I want to be part of it. And to be honest with you, the view is much better from here. They're going into the city now. Let's go with them. I'm off. I'm going home for a drink or two. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem near the towns of Bethphage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you were doing that, tell him that the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street, tied to the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bypassers asked them, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them and the men let them go. They brought the, cloak, the colt to Jesus threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches in the fields and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! Pra God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming of kingdom of King David, our Father. Praise God! Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple and looked round at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the 12 disciples. We're going to have a think about the story today using the shape of a donkey. You might want to grab a pen and paper to draw along with me. Jesus told two of his disciples to go and fetch him a colt. As they were untying the colt, the people 
asked them what they were doing. They told them that the Lord has need of it and will return it. As Jesus rode on the donkey, the people declared their praises. They spread their garments and branches on the road. Here's a few things that I think are going on. Let's have a look at what the people are saying about Jesus. They are saying that Jesus is coming in the name of the Lord. In other words, Jesus is coming as the representative of God. If the head teacher of your school stops you in the corridor as you are going into a lesson and tells you to ask your teacher to come and see them, you are sent in the name of the head teacher. When you go to the teacher and say, the head teacher wants to see you, they would go because you've come in the name of the head teacher. Jesus came in the name of the Lord, and elsewhere Mark tells us that Jesus is not only God's representative or ambassador, but God's son. So if we wish to know what God is like and what God desires, then we can do no better than to look at the one who rode into Jerusalem on a colt. They are saying that Jesus is coming as the king. Jesus is coming as the king of the kingdom that God promised in the past. David was the great king of Israel. This is political stuff. Jesus had come to bring God's kingdom of righteousness, mercy and justice. And the people recognised this. They declared his praises and they symbolically throw themselves before him as they spread their cloaks on the ground before him. They are declaring that Jesus is saviour. The word Hosanna in Hebrew meant save us. It's the same word you can find in verse 25 of Psalm 118. The people who were welcoming Jesus into the city were recognising Jesus as their saviour. His arrival into Jerusalem on a cult was a fulfilment of the prophecies that had been made about him in the Old Testament. He was the Messiah that the people had been waiting for. What's your favourite part of the story and how do you view Jesus? What do you think you'd do if you saw Jesus coming down the road? How would you react? Would you give up anything to show him respect and honour? They used branches and cloaks to make a path for them to go across so that they wouldn't have had to go on the dusty road. They would have been of much more value then than they are now. Can you think of a time when you received a gift that made you feel really special or somebody shared something that was precious with them? What do you think would be a modern day example of throwing coats on the road for Jesus? Let's take a moment to think and consider something that each of us could give as an offering of love and worship to God. This could be physical, practical or something else, like your time. When you've thought of your offering... Why not lay down something that's near you, a coat, jacket, jumper, blanket, on the floor to symbolise this offering to God? Father, use these offerings for your will and for your glory. Amen. Put the stars in outer space. You put the freckles on my face. And, and all the fish that swim and all the birds that fly were made from your incredible imagination. Creator God, we sing you to the Creator God of all the world. Creator God, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. Stripes on every bee, and all the grass that grows, and all the leaves that fall, a part of your amazing plans for this creation. Creator God, we sing it to the Creator.
And now we come to our prayer for others, our prayers of intercessions. So let us be still in the presence of Almighty God as we focus our hearts and minds on the needs of others and of ourselves. Specifically, we bring to Almighty God this morning the passing of 12 very difficult months of COVID and all its horror and misery for the people of this country and for the world. Let us pray. Creator and sustaining God, we give you thanks for the sign of the rainbow. It has been a linking factor in the fight to save lives. Displayed in homes, shop windows and factory gates, it has reminded us of your creative work for mankind. Children have copied the rainbow. Artists have used its symbolism and the media have used it as a collective symbol of hope and deliverance. We ask that your prism of love spreads throughout this country and beyond, guiding men and women to have faith and courage to endure the pain of this COVID pandemic. Gracious God of comfort and strength, after 12 months of this pandemic, we have watched it affect its and feared its progress. We turn to you in hope and expectation that the next 12 months will be less traumatic and less painful. By staying at home to avoid spreading the disease, we have learnt, as never before, that our social interaction is of your design and your purpose. Yet we have had to refrain from meeting our loved ones to save the lives of others. We ask your Spirit's touch upon our lives to encourage and sustain us, in these days of promise and recovery for the future. In particular, we commit to you those who grieve for lost ones. We are mindful of those who we knew in this Paris and those we never met. Lord, so many people have died and we struggle to understand this pandemic and a loving God. 
Our eyes become clouded with tears, and through them a figure takes shape of a crucified Christ, aching to embrace and share in our sorrow. Be with us, Lord. We thank you for all that sustains us today as we look forward to a better tomorrow. Caring and revealing, Lord, we give thanks for the scientists and mathematicians tackling the pandemic and for their understanding of your world, for their commitment to find positive answers in a step-by-step -step process. We pray for teachers and trainers involved in nurturing the minds of young and old alike, for opening up new possibilities for growth and maturity of character. We marvel that we have the capability to implement life-saving care for those who need it. May your church be central in showing the world your amazing creation. Let each one of us hold out hope for a better world for all your children. May we continue to find ourselves in a loving relationship with you, Father God. Let us keep in mind our church family and those on our weekly prayer list, those who are ill and those grieving the loss of a loved one. We ask that the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit be with all those for whom we pray. Our final prayer is for ourselves, that in your love we may come to know you more and more, that in our earthly life we may experience your kingship, your light and your radiance in our lives. Amen. And now, as one body, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
Our worship concludes as we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We thank you for sharing in worship this morning. May your next week be thoughtful and thankful.